Right, this is a painting of Kimmeridge Bay that I did earlier this year and it shows the maple ledge that goes across the bay and is exposed at high tide. In fact, all the ledges tend to be exposed at high tide. And this is the finished piece and I have just sold this piece. It hasn't even been exhibited yet, so that's very exciting. But it does mean that I will be down, heading down to Kimmeridge again very soon and I will be beginning again with the drawings and preparing a new painting. Not sure what it will look like because it depends to a certain extent on the height of the tides, the weather on the day. And it probably, if it's anything like today, won't necessarily be blue and sunny, but then I can play with whatever colours I like. But we'll have a look as we go through and see how it comes out. I think it's really important and inspirational to start the process by sitting within the landscape, seeing the geology, seeing the geography, seeing the topography and actually translating it into my pictures. I want to celebrate what I'm seeing and, and actually being there puts me in touch with it and it is so essential to making the picture. So I'm going to paint a familiar view. I'm going to sit myself down at the head of Maple Ledge. It's a very familiar view to me um, and it just creates this wonderful composition. The arc of the ledge as it flows across the bay, leading across to the tower itself. And it's just such a splendid, special place to be. So sitting there and taking a careful sketch is really going to put this into my memory. So once I've come back with sketches and I'm happy with the information that I've gathered out in the field, I then come back and I decide what size canvas and then I actually prime it with raw umber and I draw out in charcoal. And the reason I use raw umber as an under prime is that once I start putting the colour on, which you'll see later, um, it really sings straight out to me and I, I do love colour. You can see most of the paintings are out for an exhibition but I, I love the use of colour. So it, it's a very good start and the actual composition is vital because once I've done the drawing that's the way it's going to stay through the picture and um, the creation of the image. So there's very little leeway. I've sort of got to get the composition right. If that isn't right in the first place, it isn't actually going to work. So I'm quite happy with the way it's sitting on the page here and I'm transferring it as accurately as I can and what I can remember of it. So I know the, the angles of the slopes. And although I haven't got colour on, I do, for the most part, I'm very aware of the colours that were there because when I've sat down to actually draw up from the beach, because I'm careful in the drawing, I'm actually looking so carefully at the subject. So I can look at that and I'm straight back sitting on the beach. I do actually take photos nowadays because I've always got my phone on me like we all have. Um, so if I get stuck, I can always reference them. But really, I very rarely need to, because I know that as I'm sketching here, I've got all the darker greens of the trees. I've got the, oh, actually on that day, there was no reflection of the tower in the bay, partly because there was just a light breeze that rippled the surface and did away with all of that. So all those images are there in my head. 
Which is why I always go out or like to go out to do new drawings before I start a, a new painting. Um, the sky, for instance, I know perfectly well that it was a beautiful blue sunny day and we've got just a waft of lighter cloud, almost not seen across there. Um, and so that's basically what I'm doing. This is the part I love the best because the colours are truly themselves. You see what I mean about laying the colours down next to each other? And just, they can, it's harder to see on the palette as you're mixing, but then you lie it on the painting itself. Oh, mouse watering that. <laughs> 